As, a, as through the DNA, we find that, in some sense, some of Genesis is vindicated. We are, in a way, part of an animal creation, and we share part of their material in our own makeup. I, as a mammal, never kind of doubted that I had this relationship with roundworms and um, other creatures. Uh, it does make short work of racism. It means racism is no longer something we have to argue with, we may have to argue about, we may be some distance from being able to completely uh, pronounce its utter defeat, but it's over as an argument. There is no gene for race. Racism is a primitive, stupid uh, construct uh, made out of literally nothing. And it goes the way of creationism once you study the origins of the species properly, which we are now able to do. Or you might want to just look at the history of the meteorites that hit the Yucatan Peninsula and very nearly put an end to all life on this earth but did not. Destroyed the dinosaurs and many, many other species but somehow led to our emergence, pathetic bare forked creatures as we are, from a long period of global winter and gloom. And if that fact that can now be established from scientific inquiry doesn't strike you as enormously more impressive, than any creation myth or tale ever told. I will be surprised, but then I'm surprised all the time. Faced with this extraordinary treasury of study and wonder, there are people who in effect take the, the truffle, unwrap it, throw the truffle away, and eat the wrapper as fast as they can. Don't bother them with hawking or DNA or the Hubble telescope, what they want is some more astrology in their lives. The Washington Post, my hometown paper, has a horoscope column every day. It annoys me more than my New York Times, which still has that stupid, all the news that's fit to print on its top left every day. I, I'm never, I, I'm always trying to begin my day slightly annoyed. Um, and I, it never fails, because these are the two papers that come to my house. And there are people who want to teach our children that uh, we as a species shared the earth at the same time with stegosaurs and pterodactyls. They want this lie taught officially to children. I know I'm on slightly sensitive ground because I'm in Tennessee. <laughs> and I remember that Al Gore at a low point in, was there a low or lower or lowest point in his... Uh, uh, did, agree, did say at a press conference in Tennessee that he would, he would not himself want to assert the truth of evolution, uh, which seemed to be an extraordinary betrayal on his part. But I'm not referring, as H.L. Mencken did, with any intention to condescend to the ill-educated or the unfortunate. Uh, what worries me is the, is the fashion among the supposedly educated and the pseudo-intellectual and the semi-educated for matters like uh, witchcraft or divination uh, or cultism of various kinds, all of which can claim the sanction of faith if they wish. But, but look at what they're throwing away to sink themselves into this <coughs> shallow morass of sentimentality and superstition. Does this matter? Yes, it does in my judgment. Because as it happens, we're faced at the present, which is no news to you, with a root and branch uh, challenge upon, challenge to, an assault upon our society and our freedom, and indeed our life and liberty, mounted by a faith-based monotheistic fanaticism that's utterly cruel, utterly nihilistic, utterly without any doubt of its own rectitude, and utterly reactionary, and elements of this crusade, or jihad as it calls itself, have managed to form a secret army within the borders of the United States, not just within uh, some of the mosques paid for by spoiled and opportunist Wahhabi princes, mosques into which FBI agents have refused to set foot, but in our prison system, in our armed forces, and in some of our ghettos. And this secret army means to destroy us all, and it means to do it in the name of faith. And what has been the response? In my view, it's been very pallid, almost apologetic. 
you hear people say, well, not all religions like that. It's not fair to judge all faith by that kind of thing. Perhaps not. But let me take the example that preoccupies us the most and that may be central to this same argument, the Israel-Palestine dispute. Every, every one of you knows something about it. Some of you may remember a rather distinguished Israeli foreign minister named Abba Iba, who was also for a while Israel's representative at the United Nations. He's now deceased, alas. I used to know Mr. Iban slightly. I remember he used to say in the opening of his speeches, he was a very great uh, attender of and giver of seminars on this matter. Said, when you look, he said, at the Israel-Palestine question, the first thing that strikes you, the very first thing that will strike you, is the ease of its solubility. Now, admit to yourselves, ladies and gentlemen, most discussions of the Israel-Palestine dispute don't begin in that tone of voice. But he went on to say, what could be simpler? There are two nations, one Arab and largely Muslim, though partly Christian, anyway, we're an Arab nation in Palestine, and there is an ancient yearning for a Jewish national homeland there. There's a fair amount of land, neither of these populations are very large. The solution has been self-evident for a long time, the partition and two states, one for each, there's room for both. And indeed, both, in theory, recognize one another as national movements. Well, it is that simple as a matter of fact. There's nothing making it toxic except what? Except the intrusion of religion into the simplicity, the human simplicity of this argument. Because there are those among the Zionist leadership who think that God gave them all this land. And there's nothing to argue about with anyone who just happens to live there, who isn't Jewish. They're an inconvenient population, condemned by prophecy. And as you are well aware, there's no shortage of Muslim spokesmen who are more than able to take them up on that claim and say, no, you have it entirely wrong. This has been Muslim land forever. It belongs to the caliphate that was holy, the empire that will one day come again if the faithful bear witness long enough. And then there'll be no need for any Jews here, and they'll all be destroyed. And as if this wasn't decorative enough, there are a number of Christian Zionists who say that actually this would make quite a good launching pad for Armageddon and for the return of the Messiah, since his last visit was so unpersuasive. <laughs> and that the instrument of this will be the Jewish Second Temple, which will inflame the Muslims sufficiently to bring about the final conflict and the return of the divine. Uh, Lenin used to say about social democrats that he supported them as the rope supports the hanging man. The Christian Zionists who claim to friendship with the Jews on this basis uh, don't always tell them that this coming Armageddon means that all the Jews will have to convert to Christianity. Uh, having done their job of bringing on the Holy War and the Armageddon, they'll either have to convert to Christianity or go straight to hell. That's in the small print. Um, but these three wonderful monotheisms have made a perfectly ordinary human dispute insoluble and poisonous. And they all know, and some of them hope, that they can arrange matters so that this dispute leads to the destruction of us all. And they don't think of that as a risk they are running. They think of it as a favor they are doing. And I don't think they're sufficiently rebuked. And I'm very sorry to say that in Washington, D.C., where I live, and where the Congress meets, and where our deliberative assembly occurs, and where our president sits, that, that from these secular United States, which forbid any state establishment of religion, support goes to the fanatical messianic settlers, in the first instance, to the Saudi Arabian princes, in the second instance, and through a bundle of faith-based initiatives to the fanatical Christian Zionists of the United States in the third instance. And all this is therefore being paid for by your tax money, a, a conspiracy of religion, a reverse ecumenicism, if you like, a, a shady Hitler-Stalin pact between the monotheisms that really does risk the destruction of the human race and that has already shown how much it cares for human values in Palestine itself. In other words, I think the situation is extremely serious. And more is required than a bit of bleating about the wall of separation. Further, how is my time? I didn't bring a watch. I mustn't trespass on your time or... I think I can cram most of it into five. 
perhaps at the expense of a few mordant remarks.